Here are three common mistakes people make in falconry, which I'll tell you about today so that you hopefully don't make the same mistake. The first is when you train a bird to do something you don't want it to do by accident. This is known as training a mistake. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a hawk and you decide you're going to fly in a certain venue. You take it to that venue, the bird looks around, it's not too sure and he thinks, oh, I'm just going to fly over to that tree over there. It's about 150 meters away, but it's out of the way of this area. I feel a bit safer. I'll go over there. And you go, oh, fair enough. And you walk over and up at the tree it is. You get your bit of food and it flies down to you. So you try again the next day. Same venue. The bird looks around again and goes, oh, I'm not sure about this. Yeah, I'll, I'll go to that tree again. Off it goes. And you go again three or four days in. And very quickly that bird learns that the best way to safely and securely get its reward of food is to fly completely out of your flying area over there because you go over every time and call it down. And that's just a very simple example of training a mistake. The way to avoid that is to try and think about what could happen if your bird disappears over to that tree. In that situation, if you do that same thing the next day to get the bird back, that's where you're inadvertently training the bird to do the thing you don't want it to do. So you've got to vary what you're doing, vary the training, vary the location of where you're flying the bird, and things like that. If you do, however, train a mistake in a bird, two ways to rectify that. One is to fatten the bird up, take it off flying for a little while, give it a malt or give it a few weeks off flying free and then slowly bring the weight back down while starting to train it and try and vary the techniques of flying it and the venue and retraining it to do exactly what you want it to do. And there are lots of different techniques involved with that. The second way is to not fatten up first and just to start retraining it straight away. And depending on the bird, this could be easy enough. It could be a challenge, but this is what the art of falconry is all about. The next is simply getting the wrong bird. So many people buy a bird of prey because they think, I like that species, the look of it, I've heard nice things about them, or whatever. But if you get the wrong bird, you could end up with something too noisy, for example. We can just about get away with murdering the noisy barn owl there, though. And, of course, that does depend on your tolerance to noise. And secondly, you could have the wrong species in general. So firstly, What's the difference between a brand new bird and a second hand bird? And what I mean by brand new bird is I mean a young one that you're going to hand rear, like a, an owl you would hand rear, or maybe a three month old hawk that you're going to then train from that age. And a second hand bird would be something older that someone has previously trained and flown and handled. And think of it like buying a car. You buy a brand new car, you know that nobody has been speeding round corners and braking hard and not servicing it properly, etc. And you know that you're the first person to use that vehicle. And a second hand vehicle, of course, you don't know its history. Now, I realise that makes me sound like I'm saying that you should only ever get a new young bird. And in some cases, that is the best way around. However, I have in the past taken on older birds, which have ended up being fantastic birds for handling and flying. So there's no particular way around each one that's more obvious than the other. The other thing would be the species of bird. There are good birds for beginners and there are good birds for people who are more experienced. Experienced. You don't want to be getting something that's going to be too challenging. For example, don't get a large eagle if it's your first bird and you're not used to handling birds of prey. Don't get a peregrine falcon if you've not learned how to swing a lure properly and you don't know how they actually behave differently to hawks, for example. This barn owl here, I was told, should not be taken on by someone without the right experience because it came across as if being too aggressive. Actually, it's just very excitable. That's all it is very very tame flies to the glove very well and it's just a bit noisy and a bit feisty but if you don't know what you're doing you could accidentally get yourself slightly injured by a very excitable bird like that with those sharp talons on its feet and the last one is something we call overbirding 
Now the best example of this is let's say you get yourself a barn owl and you train that bird to fly and you fly it for you every day and you think this is great, I'm able to actually fly it every day, I'm fitting it around my work schedule and family life, it's all going really well. But I'm really enjoying it, so I want to get myself a second bird and you get yourself a kestrel for example and you train that one, you get it flying and you think this is going well as well and then you get a third bird, maybe a fourth and so on and you build up a bit of a collection. Now I have currently 15 birds of prey, but I have four employees and a large team of volunteers, which allow me to actually manage the birds properly so they're all cleaned out regularly, handled and flown regularly, health checked, etc. In the case of someone who's doing this as a hobby, then often they find they haven't got enough time to look after lots of different birds. And sometimes they think they have enough time and resources, but they actually don't. And it's better to have one bird of prey that's super fit, super healthy, a great hunting bird or a great flying bird, rather than having four or five reasonably good fit birds. And it's like this YouTube channel. I'm now putting out only videos which I think people will find beneficial, entertaining or interesting, or educational or a combination of all of those things. I'd rather put out two or three excellent videos that will actually get some views a month than a dozen videos that are just mediocre and no one's really going to find very fascinating. So it's the same principle with keeping birds of prey, overbirding can cause that problem. And there are other issues with overbirding too, like needing more space for your aviaries, and also the risk then that one of your birds will attack the other one, because birds of prey eat other birds of prey. It's a bird eat bird world. They're all killers and hunters, you've got to remember that. So if you have an aviary and you're putting a wall in the middle, you've got to make sure that wall in the middle is solid wood, there are no gaps that a talon hit get through or anything like that and those are other issues that can come with having more than one bird anyway hope you found that really useful i'm now going to get on with some more falconry tasks myself bye for now